everyone. Welcome to Golf Stream today. Ron Nicoletti along with Katie Stazak. And as you can tell by my lovely co-host, uh, it is Derby Day. She's got her Derby Fascinator on. You know, we got a great card today. we got 10 races. We actually have double stakes action. Of course, there's a race later on we'll talk about in a minute. But we have some great action today. And we got a carryover in the Rainbow Six, which starts in race number five today with this 10 race card. Over $15,000 in the pool. Just about $16,000 in the pool. That's races five through ten and you know what else we got going on here today we have the derby diva hat contest registration if you're at gulfstream park make sure you sign up sorry katie you're not eligible you work here that's okay i don't <laughs> think i'd win anyway but wearing this hat to support the contest it's a great fun day come out and register we have different categories as well one for younger girls, 12 and under. We have a more sophisticated contest for the traditional look. And we have a whimsical contest, I believe, for more of the fun, creative derby hats. So come out in full force. It's a lot of fun and some really great prizes that they're giving away. On Florida Derby Day, I saw a lady was wearing a hat and it had the racetrack going around the top of it. You know, the horses weren't moving, but so uh, I'm sure we'll see some of that today. Once again, right here at beautiful Gulfstream Park, the biggest derby party in South Florida is right here here today. Lots of stuff going on. Silent auction. We'll tell you about all that throughout the day. But right now, we're going to take a look at today's card. Because as I mentioned, we've got a pretty nice card today. We've got a fast main track. We have firm turf course. It is absolutely spectacular as far as the weather goes in South Florida. We've been blessed the last two days with no humidity. Our foe here at Gulfstream Park in the summertime. No humidity. Just a beautiful day. Let's get right to the first race. It's a six furlong claimer. It's four year olds and up. Six thousand two $250 and one jockey change important here on Reggae Boy Man, make the rider Alan Mirage. And Kenny, we both went with the number three. I thought I was going to fool you here with the number three, and once again, you got it. <laughs> Can't fool me, Ron, <laughs> especially with this horse, Dangerous Trick. He's going to be making his first start off the claim for trainer Rowan Dixon after rallying between horses, but then fading late to be third in his last start on April 18th. But when handicapping this race, I had to go two starts back because that was when he got it out a game neck victory on April 4th over a horse named Big Grandpa who came back to decisively win a race here on Wednesday. Yeah, you know, Dangerous Trick, one of our favorite horses here and everything last time. We really were on his bandwagon last time. It didn't come to fruition. He was going for three races in a row. I think it's a great spot to bounce back. But the horse that was in that race, who we both have in second, Smoking Field, certainly lived up to his name in that race. When he kicked clear, he defeated that uh, Dangerous Trick. He won that race by two-plus lengths last time, and he was double-digit odds. You know what? I think the key was the equipment that day. The blinkers came off for that race, and he moved forward in a big way. They stay off for this race, but jockey Jonathan Gonzalez, he stays on. Yeah, so we'll see how that works out, if they can beat Danger Trick. I also used the number one on the inside. Katie used the eight. The one dreaming of Joey moved to the Dave Rakoff Bond via the claim. He had a, a horse first off the claim win just the other day. I'm talking about the trainer, David uh, uh, Rakoff. Uh, duel with Danger Trick last time out. Faded from its earlier exploits to finish fourth behind the horses we were just talking about. So I just thought maybe the source can't win it. Changing barns might be able to grab a share. Yeah, I threw win the eight upon reflection, who got caught down on the inside in his last start on March 8th. The area of the track was not playing well on that particular day. He tired to be sixth. I think he's going to move forward today because in his prior two starts, he finished second, beaten just a half length each time and he's going to be fresh for this start compared to the rest of the field. Well that's how we see race number one. We'll flip the page and go to the second race of the afternoon. This is seven furlongs. These are maidens. Three year olds and up with maiden special weight conditions. Six runners in the field but this is a pretty nice field. I, I went with the number six and so did you. Z Super Zapper. First time started. Uh, house horse. It's from the Stronic Stables. It's a homebred. It's a son of uh, Ghost Zapper making his career debut for Ramon uh, Morales. Pretty steady work tab. Yeah, very steady work tab. He's been pretty consistent since November. Twelve published works leading up to this debut and well-bred. A son of Ghost Zapper, winner of the Breeders' Cup Classic. And the dam was grade two stakes place. Yeah, and we also used the number four Euro Exchange stretching out to the seven furlong distance on the main track. Chased the pace, finished the promising third. That was his five furlong career debut on the turf. Cam Gambolati, Eddie Castro, surface switch. A little bit of the unknown, but that was a pretty nice performance on the turf. Maybe you can translate that to the main track today. I completely agree, and he turned in a very sharp work here on the main track to tune up for this race, went four furlongs in 47 and 4 
on April 25th. Yeah, we used the uh, three to Verney Bay going back to the main track, rallied, finished second last time out. That was special weight competition, uh, going five-eighths in the grass. I don't know if I like them that much on top of the ticket, but I used them and so did you in the third spot. The most experienced horse in the field, also the oldest horse in the field, could have an edge there. We like that senior, senior citizen angle there today. Don't look at me when I say that. Third race, five and a half furlongs. Maiden claim is three-year-olds and up $12,500. One scratch in here. Sergeant Thompson is not reporting in this race this afternoon. I went with the one horse in here, Mighty Warrior, stretching out an additional uh, half furlong. Broke from the rail, finished an improved second. Similar going five-eighths of a mile. Mike Petro, Jonathan Gonzalez, a gelding's second consecutive start from the inside post. Yeah, logical choice here. Was clearly second best that day. Two and a quarter lengths in front of the third place finisher. Some nice connections there. Definitely should have on the ticket. I put the six indie artist on top. I thought he could be a nice value at five to one. He finished a gaining third in his last start on April 25th at this level for trainer Juan Rodriguez. That was after getting forced seven wide coming into the stretch. And it was a second start back from a two-month freshening. He should be at his best in his third start of his current form cycle. Well, the horse you have in second, I had in third, is uh, Sparky B. So we're basically in agreement here. And uh, Sparky B plummeting down today really hasn't uh, didn't show much when it was running. Uh, that was against Maiden Special Weight Competition was last uh, November and September, November, or something like that. Yeah, the layoff's a bit of a concern, but have to respect this barn trainer, Gustavo Delgado. He's hot right now. Yeah, he does pretty good with those kind of layoffs, like 19, 20%. So uh, that is the third race of the afternoon. Let's go back to the turf. For our fourth race, the turf course listed as firm. One mile, maiden claim is three-year-olds and up $20,000. Nine runners will go to the post in here. And Katie and I are both feeling great. And we picked the number four, I feel great. Hopefully, I feel great, feels great today. <laughs> this is a Milton Wolfson trainee, and I think he's well spotted in this race. Stretched out on the grass for the first time in his last race. Closed well to get up for second. That was going seven and a half furlongs on April 22nd. A mile should be just what he's looking for. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with that one. The horse we both, well, we're in exact agreement again here. Number eight, world class kitten. Hey, he's the son of Kitten's Joy. If you're at Gulfstream Park and there's a son of Kitten's Joy running, you better pay attention, especially on the turf course. Turn it back to a mile after returning from an extended layoff. He set the pace. He weakened. He finished seventh. It was against $12,500 maidens going a mile in the 16th. It's just the connections, the breeding. You've got to respect this, this Mike Maker. And, uh, you know, pretty good with second off a long, long layoff. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the turn back from a mile and a 16th. And they're both, we both used number seven on Tie the Knot, making the South Florida debut for Leo Gabriel Jr., the trainer. Showed promise against similar up, upstate of Tampa. Yeah, and he's a son of Leroy de Senemo, bred to go a mile on the grass. Yeah, bred to love the grass today. So the 4, 8, 7, we're in exact agreement in race number 4 today. We're going to flip the page, go to race number 5, 1 mile and 1 16th on the turf. These are maidens, 3-year-olds and up. Maiden special weight condition, scratch the main track only. Participant number 9, Danes pulpit and we want to go back and show you a, a race of that of extensible who I know I have on top of the ticket and I believe you too. This race is back from April 11th. Yeah, we're going to take a look at this maiden special weight, and this is a nice race, and you're going to want to take a look at the three extensible here. He's going to make a three-wide bid and actually get up for second. The only horse he loses to is the horse on the front end, and that is his stablemate Ulysses, who I am very impressed with. He's going to run later on in the English Channel Stakes on this card. Not going to have to deal with Ulysses today. Extensible's been pretty consistent, improved with every start on the grass, has definitely found his preferred surface there. And I think think he's going to get it done today. Yeah, I think so, too. I think that the distance a mile and 16th will suit him well. We both used number five, Arch in the Park. This one was certainly game and defeat when he set a pressured pace throughout. He finished second against a state-bred maiden special weight competition at this same mile in the 16th distance. Mike Trumbetter, the trainer, Eddie Castro. This is a $435,000 gelded son of Arch. They paid a lot for this horse, and it seems like he's in a nice spot. And he might be very dangerous if he's able to dictate things on the front end. Looks like we're in complete agreement again in this race. 
We finish our ticket <laughs> with the six semblance of order, who actually finished behind Arch in the Park in that April 10th start after getting bumped at, in the gate at the start and making a four-wide bid at the top of the stretch. This Jenna Antonucci trainee seems to be improving since he switched racing surfaces as well. He dead heated for second at this level back on March 21st. Yeah, and six to one in the morning line, and uh, once again, uh, Katie finds. When I'm trying to not make her fine. So we're in total agreement in uh, race number five. Let's go to race number six. This is seven and a half furlongs. It's a, a turf allowance optional claimant, three year olds and up with $25,000. Uh, note that the number three horse in here is a gelding. Also, scratch both main track only participants, number 10 and number 11. I really like number eight, Escondido, in here. Made him my best bet of the afternoon, singled him on my Rainbow Six ticket, and I'll tell you why. He's trying to make it two in a row, and his fourth turf victory this year. Every time this horse runs against $25,000 optional claimers, he wins. His only miscue was a sixth place finish and he had trouble and that was in the $60,000 Cutler Bay Stakes. Yeah, I believe we have a video of his last race to show and that was from April 17th and it was just so impressive. He drew off easily to a three and three quarter length victory and he's really just been doing more of the same at this level. He was supposed to be entered in the English Channel Stakes later and I would have had him on the ticket but here it seems like he's a singe. I think he'll continue to do what he's been doing. He's four for six at this distance as well as four for six here at Gulfstream. Yeah, I mean, I just thought he was the logical choice in there and, uh, you know, looking for a win and they got him in a really nice spot and, uh, and now you have to decide if you're going to single on your rainbow Six ticket, and this is the second leg of the Rainbow Six. As we mentioned, when we have a 10 race card, it starts in race number five. We pick five starts here, too. But that's not the only horses in the race. We have our second and third uh, selections flip flopped in here. I went with the four Whisper on the win. This one, a winner at this distance back on March 13th, turning back out and after and stepping up after stepping up the competition, I should say, finished a really nice second against this level of competition going a mile. Dave Katzen, Luca Panici, really consistent son of Flower. Alley, and if Escondido wasn't in here, I'd like this horse a lot more. Yeah, I think Escondido, I completely agree with you being the best bet of the day. Really nice colt. Really excited to see him go again. Seems to be a great claim for trainer Louis Ramirez. We also both use the five perfect day. He'll be fresh in here. He's making his first start since February for trainer Lauren Richards. He's won two of his last three starts and has hit the board in five straight starts dating back to April of last year. He's a four-time winner at Gulfstream in his own right. Yeah, nine starts, four wins here. So he's the old horse for course play in Leon. Andrew Conclavas will be in the saddle, been riding in great form, uh, like I said, whisper on the wind. Uh, we both have the eight on top, and I think that's a horse you really have to pay attention to in there and see if you want to uh, single a mill net. Our first of two stakes races of the afternoon comes in race number seven, one mile and one sixteenth on the turf, uh, three-year-old, $75,000 guaranteed. It's the English Channel and the scratch here of number five, Call me crazy. Sorry to hear that that horse was scratched. You went with the number two Rizwan on top of your ticket. Well, call me crazy. I had call me crazy on the top of my ticket. Disappointed to see him scratch. I'm going to take the two here, Rizwan. And just what a consistent colt. He shows up every time. And I really think that the race is going to set up for him today. There seems to be a lot of speed. Moon over Cusco, Black Martino, Comanche Storm, and Ulysses have all run on the lead in their last starts. And Rizwan, I think can sit just off the pace. He's won his last three turf starts in a row with a close second place finish on the dirt sandwich in between. Trained by Phil Gleaves. He knows the horse very well. He trained his dam who was stakes place entertaining. And I just think this colt is, is due for a win. Stepping up for sure in this race, but I think it'll sit, he'll sit very well in this race. Well, I went with the number one, Moon over Cusco, in top of my ticket, making his uh, career stakes debut after returning from a two-month layoff to Notch's second consecutive uh, turf victory over this course. Never been beaten here at Gulfstream Park on the turf. You know the connection, Shad Brown. What about the rider, Tyler Gaffneon, the apprentice riding without the apprentice waiting here because it's a stake race, but he had four wins on yesterday's card, so uh, Tyler Gaffneon certainly playing a hot hand. I know you want to talk about Ulysses. I did did not use Ulysses on my ticket. Pray tell why did you use him? 
Well, he's the other Chad Brown horse in here, and I really like this colt from the start. He is gorgeous. When I saw him in the walking ring before his first start on dirt, I thought, wow, this horse could be a great hunch play. Didn't fire. They switched surfaces with him, and he really moved forward and showed what I thought he had in his career debut. He's going to be tested today, and again, taking a big step up from the maiden ranks, but he's a beautifully bred son of Street Cry, and Leandro Gonsalves is going to be aboard, and he's been riding very well for this barn in particular. Well, number three, Comanche Storm, it really intrigues me, and I'll tell you what, ships down from Tampa to try stakes competition. He posted the best last race speed figure, a buy a figure of 86 when defeating nine rivals. It was a one-mile maiden special weight race, so it's a bit of a guess how this horse is going to run down here. What I like, too, is that that uh, Rosemary Homemeister Jr., the rider, is coming down to ride this horse. And Rosemary, an old friend of ours, rode at Calder for many, many years and uh, was leading apprentice, actually won the Ecl uh, Eclipse Award as leading apprentice uh, back in the day. And I just thought it was a, a type of horse that, uh, you know, you might want to have on your ticket. Really ran a bang-out performance. They thought enough of this horse to ship him down here to uh, Gulfstream Park and try Stakes Company. Could be a nice sneaky pick, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I mean, just uh, you know, some horse you want to pay attention to. But Katie's absolutely right. There's a lot of uh, a lot of speed in that race, so you have to uh, see how it goes. And Ulysses, uh, I left it off the ticket, but if I'm putting a major ticket together, Ulysses is going to be on it. Our second of two stakes races on the afternoon is race number eight. It's a one-mile turf stake. It's for three-year-old fillies. This is the Philly division, $75,000 guaranteed. Scratch eight, nine, and ten. And we want to go back to show you a performance of a horse uh, uh, that day, Sybil Yeah, And this was at Santa Anita, and it was in the uh, Breeders' Cup, I believe. It's a big day today in <laughs> racing, but the Breeders' Cup is another very <laughs> big day in racing. And Sybil Yeah from the Chad Brown barn, she was in this race and she had to deal with another Chad Brown stablemate in Lady Eli who was so impressive right. in winning this race. She just recently made her first start back after that and she won again. Not surprised there. But Sibelier is going to finish fifth and uh, she's a, a nice filly. She made her previous five starts in Europe. That was her North American debut. She was group three, stakes place third in the pre du Calvalos. Won a minor stake and broke her maiden at first asking overseas. Chad Brown's been very patient with her, getting her ready for this start. And I think she's just the class of the field. Looking forward to seeing her today. Yeah, she's the class of the field. And I love her workout pattern. She's a, a daughter of Sea of Stars. And she's really training nicely. And like you said, I think she's the class of the class. But there's a really nice horse in here, and that is number six, Lismore. A model of consistency in her five race uh, campaign thus far, cutting back to a mile. Shipped up to Tampa, set the pace, got caught late, finished third. That was the grade three Florida Oaks. George Weaver, Eddie Castro atop this daughter of Tisna. It's a nice horse. Absolutely. Look who she finished third to in that race in the Florida Oaks. Quality Rocks and Consumer Credit, two very nice turf fillies. And you said she has been a model of consistency. But you know who else has been a, mo a model of consistency? That's the one. We have our tickets identical here again. That is Miss Margaret. She's hit the board in 9 of 11 career starts. A little bit unconventional. She was stakes placed before she broke her maiden. And she broke her maiden against winners in a starter allowance. But she shows up every time. She most recently was third in the Sanibel Island handicap behind two other. Other very nice fillies in Celestine and the grade two stakes place Isabella Sings. You know, also, you're talking about consistency. Look at a record here at Gulfstream uh, Park on the turf. Six starts, two wins, three seconds, and one third. So six for six in the money on the Gulfstream Park turf. So the Honey Rider, a really nice race. I know we got some big race a little later on, but uh, this race here today is a lot of fun. Uh, ninth race today, one mile claim is three-year-olds and up. Non-winners of two races in life, six thousand. $2,250. And number seven, not welcome on top of both of us. Tickets looks like the one to beat. Connections alone make you have to really look at this horse. Yeah, Peter Walder, that barn is very hot right now. And this horse came a neck from victory in his last start on April 1st at the level and distance. He had the lead, drifted out a little bit in the stretch and just missed. He did break his maiden going this mile distance. I think this is a great spot for him. Number four, Fury Shot, I think is sitting on a winning performance after responding to the addition of Blinkers with an improved third place finish. 
at this level and distance. Dario Vega claimed him two starts back. Jesus Rios in the saddle today. Looks like this horse is moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, not welcome nine to five on the board. I think you might have to go a little deeper if you're putting, you know, a, a, or definitely use this horse, number four Fury Shot, on your super high five ticket. Yeah, if not welcome, takes all of the money. You could get some nice value with Fury Shot. He was well beaten behind not welcome, but with the equipment change, he ran much improved last time out. Your number one, uh, Ben Jacob, who I used in third, going to depart from the inside after recovering. Uh, had a little bit of a bumping incident to start, he finished fourth behind aforementioned Furious Shot last time out. And I do another horse that I'm not sure he can beat, the not welcome, or maybe even Furious Shot, but can be on your ticket, or, you know, next race to Super High Five. But this one, you can use him in the exact or a try. Eight to one in the morning line, a yeah. nice value there. I think Cobra Siago at five to one has some nice value. He's going to be making the turf to dirt move and taking a notable class drop from the $16,000 and $20,000 levels. Again, on the grass, but the last time he ran on the main track, he broke his maiden by more than 11 lengths. Well, let's go to the final race of the afternoon. And this one, I promise, this is the one that has the super high five in it, not the ninth. I was thinking it was a Friday card. So that one, no, we're going to use those horses we mentioned in, in the super factor. But this one does have the super high five. One mile and one sixteenth on the turf. These are maiden claims, four and up, non winners of three races in life. $12,500. Scratch the main track only participant, number 11. Abadoy, and I went with the number one horse in here, Thunder Run, moved to the Antonio Santa Bonvita claim following a, a commanding uh, a victory against $12,500 two lifetime claimers. That was on the dirt, then comes back, slow starting fourth at this level and distance on the turf. He's 25% with new claims. I'm talking about trainer Antonio Sano, Eddie Castro, handling, it's a previous turf winner, so I threw him on top of my ticket. I put Scarabajo on the top of the ticket. He actually finished ahead of Thunder Run in that last start and has higher odds on the board, so I thought, why not? I'll take him. <laughs> he stayed on for third in that April 11 start at the level and distance. He does have a win at this distance. Rodolfo Garcia is the trainer. Jose Caraballo will be in the irons. Number six, Rich Daddy, who we both have, is dropping a notch in the claiming scale after finishing uh, an okay fifth. It was against $16,000 three lifetime claimers last time out. The trainer, Alejandro Memo. Jesus Rios atop this gelding, and uh, you mentioned something about uh, Alejandro Memo. He is uh, a big uh, winner, a grade one winner in the trainer in uh, Puerto Rico, I believe. Yes, multiple grade stakes winning trainer in Puerto Rico. Ran a lot of horses up north in, at parks, and uh, he got his first win here at Gulfstream last week, so doing well. My only concern with this gelding is that he has yet to register a win on the turf. Yeah, so we'll see how that uh, final race uh, uh, comes about. We got the super high five in there, but also so this is the final leg of all of our multiple wages. I really think you got to go a little deep in this race. Absolutely. In these type of races, you always want to go deep. And in the final leg of the Rainbow Six, you want to make sure your bases are covered. Yeah, you don't want to be knocked out. And it's amazing how this uh, thing works out. we got $15,000 plus in the pool. Just about $16,000 in the pool. Starts in race number five. Now... A little later on, after we finish our fantastic live racing, there will be a, a race called the Kentucky Derby, the 141st running. Katie, who do you like? Wow, so many horses to like in this race. They're saying it could be one of the most competitive fields ever. It's certainly the most competitive field that I've seen in all of my years, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which may not be that many. But I really like the favorite here in American Pharaoh. He's the juvenile champion, reigning eclipse champion. And it, he was so impressive in the Rebel and the Arkansas Derby. And, you know, a lot of times when looking... At the Kentucky Derby, you want to look at the horse that had the most impressive win over the surface. And it's a trend where not that many horses have been working up at Churchill, but he did. And on April 26th, he breezed five furlongs in 58.4 seconds. The day before, they happened to run a five furlong race at Churchill. The final time was 58.77 seconds. He was faster than working. the race, <laughs> and he made it look easy. Well, you know, our good buddy Mike Welch at the Daily Race of Form, who spends 99% uh, of his time down here, is up there in Kentucky, and he uh, does the clocking for the Daily Race of Form, and he is very impressed with American Pharaoh, and that's a good thing for me, but not me. I'm going with the house horse. I'm going with materiality, the Florida Derby winner. This horse has done nothing wrong yet. He's going to break from a post. They're going to move him out a little bit. I think he's got a real big shot. I know the big uh, onus that the no horse that didn't run at the age two has not won a Kentucky Derby since 1852. I was there that day, and I tell you that 
this course can do it today. I want materiality. Good luck with all your selections. Have fun throughout the day. Got a great card here. Don't forget, we got the hat contest later on. Lots of great things going on. Yeah, we have a silent auction, too. You can bid on autograph memorabilia of Zenyatta, California Chrome. We're going to be having mint juleps for sale in typical Kentucky Derby fashion. And we have a great card today and a beautiful day outside. There's no place else that you should be than right here at Gulfstream Park. Good luck.